Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Appleford Amusement Park in Planet Coaster. In this episode, I'm going to install a number of flat rides to sort of round out the park, and then also put in some snack stands throughout the park to help with guests being able to find what they want to eat and drink, as well as for some restrooms. So first thing I'm putting in here is I felt like the park could use a thrill ride with some height, so I went ahead and put in the Screaminator here, named it Free Fall, and I think it really works well here because it's directly behind the monster and it just works with the line of sight with the monster itself. Now with each of these flat rides I am going to put in some lighting with them to make them in a little bit more visually appealing at night since this park is all about that night view that it has. So you'll see that throughout. Now, as I'd said in the previous episode, this is going to be the last episode for a little bit of Planet Coaster because of the fact that next I'm going to need to go ahead and do the decorating of the park, putting in all the plants, doing the garden area, everything of that nature, which is going to take a decent amount of time. And actually, when this video comes out, it is actually the day of my wedding. Um, I'm going to be marrying my wonderful fiancé a few hours after this video launches, and I'm incredibly excited and just happy overall. But with that, I'm definitely not going to have time for Planet Coaster for a few weeks, as she and I are going to go on a nice little honeymoon together. We're hoping to see some of the wonderful amusement parks in the United States on the honeymoon, so we're going to get to enjoy, and hopefully I'm also hoping to get some inspiration for future projects with this trip. But... That's a story that we'll get into more probably in the next series when I get back from my honeymoon. <clears throat> As I said though, it is going to mean that I am not going to be producing any more Planet Coaster videos in the month of October. It'll probably be a decent way into November, if not December, before the final episodes of Appleford Amusement Park come out. Because I'm going to go ahead and put in all the planting and stuff before I really finalize those last videos. With that in mind though, this video does cover the last rides and buildings to go into the park. And in a way, it's almost sad. I've been working on this project for a lot of months now, and I love how it's taken shape over time. I just have really enjoyed the different look and just how it's grown into something that's almost living the way it is. And I am so excited for those upcoming videos myself because I cannot wait to see the guests interacting with all the different things that I've created. So I am looking forward to that, and we will get to that hopefully by the end of this year. Now here, I've gone ahead and put in some of the flat rides. I've decided, I decided later to add in a few more, and I went ahead and put in lighting for each of these flat rides. This particular ride, I wasn't happy with. I, I liked the other ones, but that one had sort of a green lighting package to it that I couldn't really do anything about, and I just wasn't thrilled. Uh, I sort of rejected a few of these other ones because I felt like I have a lot of inversions nearby in the park already with the roller coaster and such, so I didn't feel like that really worked for me. And instead, I wanted to go with a ride that was a bit more unique, so I go with this Rising Raptor ride here. It's not exactly what I would call a thrill ride, but I think it's a lot of fun. It's, it gives people the ability to go at a height with a little bit of thrill. So you have the Ferris wheel that doesn't really scare you at all. You have the Screaminator, which is definitely scary and is very much for the uh, adrenaline junkies. And then you have this ride that I felt like was sort of in the middle of that. It gave you some thrill, but at the same time also just allowed you to enjoy the views at a height with relative comfort and ease. So I felt like that was a nice compromise there. Went ahead and adjusted the lighting for that. And these were the first flat rides that I had in mind. Uh, originally, I was sort of thinking these were gonna be the flat rides. Then I went ahead and once I got these all set up, I was wanting to put in the uh, names for the rides, of course, but I went ahead and showed my fiance what I had done. And as we were going over it, I realized that I was missing some areas of the park that just sort of felt a bit empty to me. And I felt like at points in time, the park would have gone ahead and put in some filler rides in those locations just to make sure that the guests had plenty to do. They aren't the main draws of the park by any means. They're not the things that are going to keep you interested in the park, really. But they are those things that just allow people to have an enjoyment without too much of an adrenaline rush 
like they will with the other rides. So I've named the Screaminator here Freefall, and this was one of the hardest sign placements I've ever done. Because of the height and such, any movement I made made me go a real distance away from it, so it was a real challenge, and I wanted to put the sign on both sides. I also went ahead and put in a little bit of more reinforcing at the top there, just so it fit in properly. But yeah, I do go ahead and put that Freefall sign on both sides. Um, this ride... I don't even know what it's supposed to be. It's generally a carnival ride, but I felt like it did fit in this park as just a standard ride, so I went ahead and named it Chaos. This one, since it is sort of the bird there and such, and there is going to be an aspect of thrill to it, I felt like the uh, Screaming Eagle was a good name for it. Now, as I talked about in the last video, there is a way where you don't have to do what I'm doing right now where I'm going through and having to recolor every single letter as I go. And you will see, here I did the trick, where I went ahead and took one of the letters that I had already colored, moved it over, and then I was able to change to different letters while keeping my original color scheme to it. So here I did the same thing. I took over some of the uh, letters that I was wanting, and I was able to keep them. But unfortunately, I had to bring over... Uh, I wasn't able to just change the letter there because I had brought over three letters together. Once I went ahead and just copied the D over though, you could see I was able to put in the warp with the color scheme that I wanted. So all three of those rides are now named Chaos, the Screaming Eagle, and the Mind Warp. Here I'm going ahead and adjusting the free fall sign to be on the other side as well, just so it has that nice look to it. And then I put in some supports to connect the two sides together. As I said, I do want it to be as realistic as possible, and this is the way I'm going to do my parks. I'm not going to do things behind the scenes that are really not seen by people overall, but anything that's sort of visible and in the eye of the guests, I do want to make as realistic as I possibly can. So, like, in the next park and stuff, you're not going to see, like, the uh, areas where the people, uh, where the different associates for the park go ahead and put their clothes or, you know, change outfits or anything like that. That's not going to be something I do. But you will see things like the different structures that are necessary. Um, I'm not going to put, like for roller coasters, I'm not going to put the repair areas and such, because I think that just takes a lot of piece count. And with this park already, I am facing some lag at points in time when it is saving. And I don't even have the guests in here yet, so I know it's going to be a little bit rough once I do. And I don't want to make it any worse by putting in unnecessary things that I don't feel really add to the overall uh, ride experience. So here, this was one of those areas where I felt like a ride was needed. And so I went ahead and put in the bumper cars. It is sort of right next to the, uh, the sort of race area that I had created. And so while I haven't at this point themed it into the race area, I am still debating it. I may go ahead and bring those bumpers that I had used as guardrails over in the race area over into this portion as well for this ride. It's something I'm going to debate and possibly something I will do when I get back and I'm doing the uh, the aesthetics for the place. Now, I did not like this red bottom to the ride, and there's nothing I could do to change that coloring to it. So I went ahead and decided to hide it here with the brick that we've been using throughout the park quite a bit. Went ahead and went with the white and purple scheme to it that we've used in other locations. And just sort of skinned the ride in it, so that way it would go ahead and take care of that issue. Now, I was able to do two walls at the same time, but it didn't exactly match up size-wise. So all I did is the areas that wouldn't match up, I went ahead and left open. And then I copied it over, as you just saw there, to fill in the majority of the area. Then these two side pieces here, these corners, that it wouldn't exactly fit, I went ahead and just made a separate piece for it. Then I copied that all the way across here to this corner to fill in as well. So pretty straightforward there. And again, since it's sort of with the race theme, I just wanted to go with the name Trade and Paint to it. Here was another area that I felt needed a ride. And I went ahead onto the workshop and I actually found this uh, Tilt-A-Whirl that had been skinned by somebody. I really liked the skin. I thought it was really beautifully done. It doesn't match my color scheme, and so I will adjust it here to match my color scheme. But I felt like it was the kind of style that the park would have gone ahead and put into place. So with that, I went ahead and just took it off the workshop. I will go ahead and put into the... Uh, 
the notes for this uh, video, the name of the person who made the particular skin and such. And that's something I want to do moving forward with my new park that I have plans to start up and such, because I am going to be using quite a few materials that people have created on the workshop. What I have planned for the park is going to be absolutely massive. And so if I was to create everything from scratch, it would take years to do. So it's one of those I'd rather go ahead and borrow or use things that other people have done and then create using those things just like I do in the game anyways by putting in rides that the people who had made the game created. So I feel like it is a fair trade-off, but I do feel like I need to go through and give the people who have done it credit in the future here. I know I didn't do that in this series up to this point or in previous series I've done. I do apologize for any buddy's work that I've used that feels like they didn't get proper credit. As I said, I believe this is by somebody named Professor Marvel or Prof Marvel. Um, but as I said, I will go ahead and put that into the notes of the video. So if you want to, you can go onto the Steam Workshop yourself and find this very same uh, ride skin and use it for yourself. He did put the ride into the skin, so that way you just plop it down as it is. As I said, for myself, I wanted to go ahead and change it so that it fit the color scheme of the park. This did take a little bit of time because there's so many little details to it and such. But the thing is, I didn't have to try to get the sides to line up and such. He had done that already. And so it's still a huge time saver just editing it to fit the way I wanted to. And I feel like that's something that, as I said, I'm going to be doing on my next park as well. Because the next park is a very big uh, plan that I have in my mind. I'm going to be using a lot of different pieces for it, and in a lot of cases, I'm just going to find something that fits what I'm looking for, and then augment it slightly so that it's the proper colors or the proper styling for the time period and whatnot that it's going to fit into. So here, changing all the colors, it was very vibrant in colors and was sort of set up as almost sort of a fair type of thing. And I wanted to change it to fit the color scheme of the park. I felt like this is the kind of ride that would have been added fairly early on to the park. Now one thing I didn't like about the setup of it was that it was open in the middle. And I felt like that was a simple enough fix. All I do here is I just click on each of the different walls because each one is a different wall, a separate building. And then I just attach roofing pieces to that particular piece that then sort of combine together under the, the center piece there. And that way, it is a fully covered ride, which I just felt fit a little bit better here. I then want to install a little bit of lighting to it just to make it a bit more exciting. So I've put in some of these rotating lights here in the center attached to this pillar that was created uh, by the person who had created the ride. And go ahead and just add four of those to it. And overall, that's what we have here. As I said, this is an earlier ride, I would say, for the park. It's something they would have put in once the monster was in place and people were traveling over to this area of the park, it's something they would have brought in and they would have wanted to decorate so that it fit the park instead of just being something that stood out on its own. So the gaudy colors and stuff, but fitting the color scheme of the park, I think really works for it. I could have brought in more white like a lot of the other buildings, but I felt since it was a ride, it worked being the sort of different color. Now for me on this one, there's only two names for this type of ride. You either call it a waltzer or you call it tilt -a whirl Since we're in the United States here, I'm going to go with tilt -a whirl um, I know that since it's in a building, it's almost more of a waltzer, but as I said, I'm going to go with tilt -a whirl here for it. Then here over in the kids area, I had really wanted to use this ride. I've actually never seen one of them in person myself. And I'm actually looking forward to the on-ride POV for it because I really don't even know how it's going to function. I do think it's a fairly tame ride because of the ratings on it. So I felt like it fit into this area well enough. And this was a space that just was sort of empty. I thought another ride here would be a good thing. I also realized then that when I had made the monster, I hadn't brought over one of the kids' signs in order to fit for the monster so that it sort of blends into the area. So that's what I'm doing here real fast. And then I will also take one of these signs and put it on for the new ride. Now, if you've looked at this ride, uh, I forget what the name of it is in game, but it has sort of a tornado artwork to the ride itself. And so with that in mind, I went ahead and named the ride Twister. I have a feeling that that's what it's going to do. It's going to spin around quite a bit. And so I think that name will be appropriate for it, but we shall see. So with that, 
I've put in all the rides in the park. But I have very intentionally left a few open spaces throughout the park because of the fact that I knew I was going to need some more food and drink. Uh, I notice in this game a lot people are always complaining about being thirsty. So I wanted to set up sort of little shacks, not full on restaurants, but shacks that would have sort of those basic necessities that people would want. So I felt like having some extra restrooms in the park would not be a bad thing at all. Wanted to make sure we got those in and then also put in some different food and drink options. So in this one here, we have the uh, Mexican food vending machine. And then we also have a gulpy soda and I hadn't used it before. So I wanted to put in one of the old fashioned popcorn machines. Basically, I make it into sort of a creation of its own here. Uh, I'm just going to call this a uh, snack shack, because really that's what it is. It's not meant for full-on meals, it's just something to grab a little bit of food real fast. And then once you've had that food, if you want to later, you could go to one of the actual restaurants, sit down and really enjoy a full-on meal. But I think it works just as a quick grab-and-go type of thing, and as I said, also gives an extra restroom to the area. So here I'm just playing around with the flooring, trying to hide the paths a little bit, but not wanting to make it too much of an issue. So I make that into its own creation, just a blueprint of its own, and I'm able to take it to the other locations in the park where I felt I needed one. But what I go ahead and do is I go ahead and change out the different um, food stands in it so that that way it fits, uh, but at the same time, gives different eating options throughout the park. So that way if somebody's like, ooh, I don't really want the Mexican food, they can go over to that one and have a pizza instead. I did want to make sure while I was here, I had seen that there was the, uh, the sort of mind reader game there, and I hadn't seen if it was in my arcade. I did check it is, so didn't need to put in there one in there, but I just wanted to make sure because otherwise it was an opportunity I was missing out on in the arcade and I wanted to make sure it was there. Here again, we're just doing this one. We're gonna go ahead and put in a Tiki Cheeky and a Pip Shot Water. And I think that was a uh, ice cream stand one there. Or it might be the ice cream stand over here in the kids area. Because the kids one, I definitely want it to be sort of kids uh, type things. So we definitely go with the milkshakes there. We go with the hot dogs and we go with the French fries. Just something straightforward that the kids would enjoy making sure that it had everything they could possibly want. Now here, I wanted to sort of create a different type of stand. We have enough food now through the park, I felt, but I could use some more drinks, I felt. So I wanted to go ahead and just make a simple drink stand here. And these are almost, in the lore of the park, going to be predecessors to those snack shacks that you see that I've already created. These would have been put in earlier. This is right by the monster and right by the tilter world that we had just installed. And so these are also going to be made out of wood instead of the brick like or the concrete like the other one was there. Because, as I said, those are newer. This is all going to be wood and much older in its nature. I also decided to put a little bit more decoration into it and put in some of these uh, fairy lights just to continue the theme of this area where it's all about the lighting. So go ahead and put in these lights here. Did have to blend it in a little bit in the corner because it didn't quite line up otherwise, but it wasn't too much of an issue there. And then I go ahead and use the haunted house flooring also here. It's not exactly perfect like I'd like, but it was pretty close and I was fairly pleased overall. It gives the idea that I wanted. And again, it's one of those that this would have been an older shack. So the fact that there's a little bit of an issue to it sort of works for me because it just sort of speaks to the age of the place. There again, you see the trick of just copying the same letter over and then you're able to get the letters you want in the color that you want. I also went ahead and wanted to bring the neon over here just to tie it in so this way the park sort of all flows and fits together well and so we got the word drinks on the side of this building and we're going to go ahead and put another one of these drink stands uh, also over by the water ride and then we're going to put a final one on the other side of the water ride as well so that way we've got some located in different locations again i just make it into a blueprint i originally tried to put it facing this direction but the ground here was just fighting me and would not actually allow two of the uh, the drinks to actually be connected properly. 
So in the end, you're going to see here, I'm going to flip the building just to more face the water right, and I think that works out perfectly fine. With that in mind, though, I am going to go ahead and end this episode. I've really been enjoying Planet Coaster, and I hope you've been enjoying these videos as well. As I said, there is definitely more to come after my honeymoon. But for now, if you've enjoyed what I did in this episode, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you all again for more Planet Coaster and more of Appleford Amusement Park.